everyone and welcome to Dueling with Downton and today I want to give you my top 5 characters from the Goha sibling story arc within the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's anime series. Taking a look at the characters involved within the episodes and the plot that was given within this arc. Giving my reasons as to why I personally like these characters more than others that appeared. So without further ado, let's start with number 5 and that being Yuga. Now then, Yuga, I have mixed feelings about, simply because he had quite a quiet arc, only having three duels across 15 episodes, and for me, I really don't care if a character duels or not. Whether they win or lose, not really that important. My main issue is, Yuga didn't really show any of his inner thoughts or get involved heavily when it came to the topics slash events that were transpiring. However, he opted to give us facial expressions to help give us clues as to what he's probably thinking in that particular moment. However, despite all this, he did keep us guessing and added more mystery within the arc, so he kept us as the audience involved and intrigued. All of his duels that Yuga were involved in were actually super enjoyable, and I thought they had some elements to them that helped made each and every one unique, but also really fun to watch. Like, who did not enjoy the riding rush duels that we got? Or when Fusions was first revealed? Or even the Yuga Devil slash Yuga Man? All of those reasons, I'm giving Yuga the fifth spot on this list. He is our main protagonist, so he's meant to be heavily featured. But I like the fact is that he did take a bit of a backseat for the beginning to let new characters get fleshed out and shown and showcased. But actually... He ended the arc pretty strong, so number 5 for Oda Yuga. Now moving on to my 4th favourite character within this arc, it has to be Goha Yuka. This is a Goha sibling that I enjoyed watching from her first introduction. As soon as she hit our screens I was like, love this character, I think she's awesome. Baseball themed, although I'm not the biggest fan of baseball, I like the fact they kept with her theme throughout. Her deck was based off of baseball. Her kind of personality and her like sort of little quirk of commentating on things I thought was really fun. Her interactions with Roa and Roman I thought were fantastic. Her playing the role of an evil star and zapping the captured beauty Roman at the end, it made me chuckle. Can't lie about that. Yuka's deck was really cool as well. And yes, I know it was filled with Zexal references. But the designs and creativity that were behind the monsters that she used, I thought you know, matched the baseball theme and were fantastic in general. The cards I personally would want to use when the rush dueling format comes to the UK. So I'll look forward to pulling some of those. Plus, I really love the many different emotional displays that Yuka displayed throughout the entirety of this arc. Whether it was sadness, whether it was, you know, the feeling of being betrayed, mystery in trying to figure out what her brother was up to. Or, you know, just happiness and joy, seeing her eat that curry that Roman made. Pair that with her voice actress performance. I'll put a picture up of the voice actor up on the screen here, and her name. But she played a fantastic role when voicing Yuka. Making Yuka my fourth favourite character within this particular arc. And I can't wait to see what Yuka offers moving forward. Now, in third, we have Asana. Now, admittedly, I haven't been the biggest fan of Asana when it comes to watching her duels. But this arc includes one of my favourite duels within Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s in its entirety so far. One of my favourites. Not my favourite, but that, of course, is Nail versus Asana. That duel, I thought, was wonderful. And I loved every aspect of the duel. Plus, the development that Asana displays I thought was incredible, seeing how she changed and developed since her first introduction, uh, where she and the Machine Cavalry Club were villains. Again, I just find the Machine Cavalry Club so goofy that I love them. As well as the fact is, Asana, I just think that she brought a different vibe to the episode that she kind of starred in. And I thought it really did highlight her development perfectly. Plus, the chibi expressions that were shown of Asana during the Yuga vs. the Luke Mandal at the end, I thought was super cute. So, Asana, because you surprised me a lot, I'm putting you at number 3. 
Now then, my second favourite character from this arc was, in fact, the Luke Man. Now then, my second favourite character of this arc was, in fact, the Luke Man. I said it twice, because it was important. Now, surprisingly, I really did enjoy the Luke Man's character. Yes, he was over the top, wacky and crazy. But, you know what, there's something about the character that just kept making me enjoy him. And just thinking he's really cool. Not gonna lie, when it came to the Luke Man, I just got absorbed into watching what it was doing and the mystery that was surrounded within the character. The voice acting and effects were spot on when Luke turned into the Luke Man and it had to sort of, you know, change a little bit up that way. I thought that was very creative. Plus the dueling style, although it was repetitive, was quite aggressive and gave us some fantastic looking fusion monsters in the form of Dragostar F and the Full Moon Dragon Umber Lancer F. Those two monsters have incredible designs and yeah, again, just cards that I love to own. Admittedly, I will say that I like the Luke Man more with his Luke shirt and helmet, more so than his perfect mode. I just like the way that the tattered cape on the non-perfect mode just kind of looks. I think it makes it look more stylish with the kind of gears top that Luke obviously wears. Um, that's my only criticism. I don't like for Luke Man's sort of full perfect mode, but if that's the only thing that stopped me from enjoying him 100%, then you know what, can't complain too much. And also, the lore behind the Luke Man. It was wild, but offered us as Yu-Gi-Oh fans something we've never ever seen before. And that is a manga character being created through a fax machine. Like, just everything about the Luke Man just was weird, mysterious, fun, enjoyable. So, I'm putting him here. Now then, my favourite character within this arc is a Goha sibling. And you probably guessed it already. It's probably many other Sevens fans' favourite character from this arc, and is Goha Yuo. In terms of an antagonist within Sevens, he is amongst one of the best antagonists we've had so far within the series. The creepy theme that this character brought with him, with all the dolls and the kind of spookiness, the mysteriousness that came with Yuo, it was nightmarish, yet very enjoyable to see. I love the fact that it gave me that creepy chill when seeing all those sort of dolls and the movements and actions that Yuo used when attaching himself to strings. Really did like that little detail there. In terms of his dialogue and personality, I'd give them both five stars. As the way he spoke slash treated his other siblings, it was horrible, yet in turn it added to his villainous, which makes him more of a threat, more of an enticing and intriguing villain as we went through the proceedings that this arc was expanded across. Every fusion monster that Yuo showed off within this anime was amazing in terms of design and ability. Again, cards are loved to own and use, and bringing fusions into sevens in the fashion that he did just left everyone's jaws dropping, mine included. Plus the fact that he ended up bringing new type monster, mon uh, 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 new monster types, I thought, again, added length and added sort of credibility to Yuo's character. His overconfidence and arrogance because of his fusions worked brilliantly in adding more layers to the character's personality and his development that was later to arrive. Now the fact that Yuo was able to be redeemed within that episode helps to mature his character and understand the emotions and the actions that he took and what they actually all meant. Even Yuo's redemption in episode 68 was enjoyable and it made sense when looking at the direction that the series wants to go down in and of course when you see what Yuo understands. With his development he actually matures a lot more in understanding the emotions that his siblings are feeling as well as his own feelings and of course what his actions caused his siblings to feel. So for that, I really do like the maturity growth that you are sort of showcased here. But with that in mind, I will have to say that 
the main reason as to why Yuo is my favourite character from this arc is because at the beginning of this arc, when all of the Goha siblings, well, the five that we know of, were introduced, I said that Yuo would be the least important. I thought that he looked boring and plain and wasn't going to play a big role. However, I am more than happy to be happy than right in that situation. Of course, I'll hold my hands up because Yuo, you were absolutely amazing in this arc. Blowed my expectations straight out of the water. So those were my five favourite characters from this Goha sibling story arc. Let me know who you enjoyed the most from this arc in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts and opinions are. So let me know there. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, this video. If you have, hit like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff for more Yu-Gi-Oh content moving forward. Now of course there will be a uh, top 5 disappointing characters from this arc coming shortly. So if it's not up on the card here, then just wait a couple days or so and it'll be up then. But other than that, have a great day. Arigato, matane, goodbye.